Here we are back at AES and we're stopping off at Blue Cap. How are you? Jerry stopped me and he told me about this new Blue Cap plugin. So let's check it out. Now, Blue Cat, uh, I love in the world of uh, Pro Tools because you enable us to use VST plugins. Yes, with Passworks and with uh, MB7 Mixer. Yeah. yeah, which is really wonderful. But you wanted to tell me about this new plugin, so, so let's talk about it. You want to come in a little closer? So this new plugin is called Destructor. It's basically a all-in-one distortion unit. Yep. It uh, it's also kind of is functions as a channel strip. You have a gate, a uh, compressor, and then you have two EQ sections, one before and one after, so pre and post. And the whole design of this is basically to do complete shaping of every type of distortion, saturation, clipping that you want. You can control every aspect of it from how it, how it distorts dynamically, whether it, it just is always distorting, whether it distorts before right. it gets loud or even while it's quiet. You know, they can basically just, it's just designed to basically have full control while still being easy to use. Right, wonderful. So, like, as, as you can see here, this is like showing you all the controls, all the parameters, there's lots of intricate controls. Or if you want, you can just hit this little minus button or this E. Right. And it makes it simple where everything becomes a macro control. That's good for a guy like me. I, I like the mix control. We've been talking about this a lot with plugin, plugin guys. I mean, it's really, really nice. So you start out with a couple hundred presets. We have stuff from like, nice. we have stuff from like hard clipping, soft clipping, aliasing, uh, guitar amp simulation, some Fantastic. bass amp stuff. We also have weirdly wonky stuff like just sure. bit destruction, bit distortion. It's just basically this is our way of trying to be like, here's an everything distortion plugin. You want right. it to emulate this, you can make it, tweak it, and make Fantastic. it sound like that. And again, you just hit the little E button if you want to be simple, yeah. or if you want to get really crazy and into it, and you have control of every aspect. So that's Fantastic. about it. This is our newest What's thing. What's it retailing at? Uh, I'm assuming somewhere around $100. Okay. But well, yeah, you can always uh, bucks is good. send us an email or just hit us up on bluecataudio.com. Cool. Well, so, thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much, Jerry. Appreciate it. Good stuff. Blue Cat are great. We love them because in the world of Pro Tools, the fact that I can use it to run VST plugins. We did a whole episode on that. It's a really, really smart thing. It really helps because Look, there's all these guys coming up with like really inventive things that aren't designed specifically for AAX. So, good job. Thanks a lot. Here we are, AES 2016, Los Angeles Convention Center. Yes. Did that sound like a bad commercial? No, uh, a little bit, but yeah, it's thank okay. It's <laughs> my friend Bruce Miller. Now, Bruce owns a couple of companies, and one yes. of them, we'll start with this, is called Desk Doctor. Yes. I'm going to paraphrase and rush through this bit. But okay. You based he basically keeps LA. You keep LA studios running. Yes, we do a lot of a lot of studios as far as maintenance, repair, modifications. Still do installs, some studio designs, and then obviously there were certain things that were known pretty well known for SSL work. And so Very well flown, known, exceptionally well known for SSL. So I get flown around quite a bit for that around the rest of the world and then to the rest of the country, of course. And I've given him uh, calls at four o'clock in the morning. I've given him calls Sundays. You come out. Yes. I'm sorry about this because now, of course, everybody's gonna be like, "Oh, what? I can get him on Sunday?" No, no, no. <laughs> no but you're the guy. You you saved my ass many times. Oh, I've just you. walked past ten minutes ago and I was talking to CLA Chris. Yes. And Chris was, you know, we we all owe you a lot. Well, thank you. Because those of us that still work on consoles or like, you yes. know, in a hybrid fashion, as most of us are doing now, coming back through consoles. You know, it's they're getting old and they need love and attention. They do, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I think you've rebuilt my power supply a couple of times. Just a few times, yes. Yeah. Unfortunately, they do need a little bit of attention every now and then. But you know, it's uh, it's something where the, those values are worthwhile keeping going. I think so too. It's like I I do mix in the box sometimes, but there's just something about at least for me. There's something magical about a 4,000 dynamic section. Of course. What is well, it? You tell me. I don't know. Part Bruce of worked at SSL from 84 to 91. 84 to around 91, yes. Yeah. Um, the, uh, it's the randomness of the electronics. You can't mimic that in, ele in, uh, in the box. You can right. get close and it's getting right. better every day. But you can never quite match the randomness of the actual electronic components. The fact that you take two resistors that are supposedly identical with two capacitors that are supposedly identical, but the phase relationship between all of them is just fractionally off, and that is part of the sound which is which makes it feel natural. Um, it, it helps increase the whole depth and the width of the of the mix and so on. Some, I don't know who designed that sort of automatic gain circuitry, but that is freaking genius. That was all back down to the original designs back in back right at the late 70s, uh, right. mainly done by Colin, Colin Sanders, 
Um, and he had He's two, a smart guy. He had two or three other people working with him very, uh, you know, very early on. Uh, yeah, because there's just something about that. It doesn't matter whether I'm going, you know, EQ to compression or whichever way around. Mm -hmm. that's, just, that's just magic. As soon as I engage that. Absolutely. We've had, um, I know there's a couple of consoles where we ended up changing the uh, compressor in switch on the center section for a button that said hit record. Yeah. There's... And there's something absolutely magical about SSL, SSL EQ, yes. overdone, yes. pushed too hard, slamming into that compressor. Absolutely. Well, you're getting into that saturation point, and the thing about the old style electronics of the SSL, and there's quite a few other companies and other consoles that do the same thing, where actually you push it to the top, and it just reaches this magical point before it breaks up, and it just starts to break up, but it's in a musical way. Yeah. It's in the way that we, we actually find pleasant to work with and pleasant to hear. Um, you know, unfortunately, a lot of modern equipment, it works in, like, in a very much similar to digital, where it stays pure and pristine all the way up. Right. And there's sort of definite places where that's very important and necessary. But it, the problem is, is that when you do that, it gets to that point where it's almost like a precipice where it falls off. The, the older electronics it has this sort of point where it just hits that saturation point where it's... Sure. I'm nervous about using the word saturation because that's normally associated with tubes and transformers. And, sure. But it happens in other electronics as well. Yeah, I think now that almost none of us are using tape or we're using tape as a tool, yes. um, we're looking for it in other ways. Yes. And yes. I, the good thing I've noticed is a lot of guys now, at least the guys that are really trying hard, are finding ways to make you know, organic analog equipment yes. that does that. They're trying to bring that Absolutely. out. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and the question comes is that cer there's certain things which you can do as essentially as a two-channel device to put on as a sweetening to your stereo mix. But there are other times when it's just that the, the breaking out into a, a mixing analog way is uh, just a much better way of actually doing certain things. Absolutely. Um, and another thing with the digital side of things is uh, correlation. Because if you have sure. too many things all working together in that in a correlated manner, because it's all being done mathematically in a, in the box, it, it's it's just not as once again I use that word random. It's, it's there's a, a randomness to it which gives some natural flavour and feel to it. Yeah, absolutely. So that leads us to company number two, company which number is two. Burbank Audio Systems. I had to pull his shirt back there. Yeah. <laughs> so we have Desk Doctor. You keep yes. everybody going out here. Yes. We love you for it. Thank you. <laughs> and you are the only guy doing this. I want uh, people to know pretty that. Pretty much now, pretty yes. Much. No, 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 I mean, there's Charlie, there's some good, talented oh, people out there. And the you thing know. is, is that the, the nice thing with most of the guys is we're all pretty good friends. Sure. And we all have, we all do a bit of everything. Great. But we all have our own specialities. And so, you know, I work with Charlie all the time. Right. I work with uh, Pat all the time and so on. But we all, we all do stuff and we all have our own uh, expert areas of expertise. There's a lot of talk, and I, and I do love this town, there's a lot of talk about Nashville and the community, but I'll yes. tell you, LA's community is special. Yes. Because now, you know, th th there's, you know everybody, I, yes. we know all the same guys, we're all mm -hmm. looking after each yes. other. We've all got families to feed, we're all Absolutely. in the same business. Yes. I, I love the community out here. And that's one thing about AES this year, I think. I think this is pretty special. It's the best it's been for a few years. Yes, it has. John Crivet has done a really good job. I mean, look at this. Freaking 20-year-olds yeah. here. Yeah, I know. It wasn't like this a couple of years no, ago. No, He's done a good. really good job. It's, I, Thursday was pretty busy. Busiest oh, Thursday I've ever seen. Oh, it was crazy yesterday. For, yeah. for a Thursday? It was yeah. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It was so it's really, really good. good. Yeah. So I think also, uh, even with all of the wonderful world of you know laptop production and virtual instruments, it's all fantastic. But I'm starting to understand, younger people mm -hmm. are starting to understand front end is really important. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. speaking of front end, speaking of yes. uh, Burbank Audio Systems, so I don't yes. mess it up, <laughs> you have a console. Yes. So what we have is we actually, we came across this console um, a couple of years ago. I actually right. came across it before then. Um, and it was a console that was being manufactured in Australia. Uh, it's a very dear friend of mine from many years ago was involved in the design of it. Um, and it's called the Custom Series 75. Um, I thought it was an amazing console and I felt that it was something which was right for the marketplace today. Um, I obviously, being around consoles for so many years, I've been watching what the marketplace was doing. I was feeling that you know, everybody was trying to find a product for a market that was changing and, and not really getting the right spot there. Sure. And I saw this and I thought this was amazing. Right. Skip forward a couple of years, we started uh, doing maintenance and service and repair for them around the whole of the Americas. Right. Started really falling in love with it. Beautiful. So then turned around and we tried to 
take over sales and marketing. In the process, I ended up buying them. Um, <laughs> and so just over two years ago, I bought the company. Uh, we then went through the process of Remington. Moved. Yes. You like the I product so, so much, much that you go. bought the company. Um, I don't know if anybody here under the age of, uh, no. No, probably it's not. Just us. Victor Kayan. Yeah, Victor Kayan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but anyway, so we bought the company. Bought, Wonderful. Moved everything over from Australia to here. Great. Um, you know, our offices are in Burbank. Uh, the, Right now, we have manufacturing facilities in North Hollywood. Um, we're probably about to move because we need something bigger. Um, and we good. started good producing, we started building these here. We've been making a few little changes, a few little improvements along the way, but. So give me, a, before we get into like okay. individual channels and stuff like that, give me an overview. This is a 24 quick, channel. This particular console is a 24 channel yep. um, with a space for uh, an S3 in the middle. Right. Um, I have a very, very uh, strong belief that uh, you need to have a space and a place for whatever DAW style of work you have. Right, absolutely. Um, but at the same time, I don't believe it should be integrated to the console. Um, the technology of uh, controllers and DAWs is changing at a far faster pace than sure. analog electronics. Absolutely. I'd like to think if you're buying a console, you're buying that for a slightly longer term right. than when the new controller comes out, new software comes out next year. Right. So we believe in making a space available so you can have everything in a comfortable work environment, but you can put whatever you want and change it should you want to next year. 24 channel inline console. Um, inline being that we have a channel path and a monitor path. Channel path is uh, true vintage Neve. Um, we have a license with Neve which allows us to use the original designs. 10, 1073, 1081, 1084, 1272. Um, so we have the four band 1081 EQ. It's, it's all the best pieces of the class A stuff that people love from the different modules all put together in one place. Um, the channel path out to the direct outputs remains completely class A. And then going to the mix buses, we actually have two separate mix buses. One which is a voltage summing bus, which is the same as the original class A consoles, and a modern style current summing bus. And right. you can actually switch between those on each channel depending on what you like and what you prefer. The monitor path on every channel is far more like a modern style Neve, modern style SSL input. Because obviously you want something far more purer and cleaner for your actual monitor. Right. Um, so marry that together with uh, three mono sends, two stereo sends, um, eight buses, and then uh, a full on grown up center section. Um, the eight buses come into a whole section with uh, obviously group masters, bus masters, and then there are returns on each one of those. So if you're actually trying to do stem mixing, yeah. you can very quickly easily uh, bring up records to the first two buses, build up your first stem, yeah. monitor back on the DAW inputs of that, and then start working your second stem. But nice. then obviously these then work as your mix path to actually mix those stems together to your stereo bus. Right. Um, it's a pair of 2254 compressors which can be switched onto the stereo bus or uh, just left Can remote. I just point out something here? His doesn't go to 11, it goes to 11 and a half. <laughs> I had to, you know, <laughs> had to do it. So, um, there's snapshot recall for all the actual switches. None of the right. entry controls for the switches. So you right. can set up basically uh, you know, a record scene and a mix scene, a replay yep. scene, an overdub scene, um, and actually have them all switch backwards and forwards. Um, the stereo buses uh, come together before the insert of the 2254s. There are four stereo echo returns. Um, there are two headphone amplifiers built in for the outside for, uh, for the musicians, which can be sourced from just about anywhere. Yep. And a third he headphone amplifier for the engineer. Nice. Uh, monitor system is much more like a modern monitor system where you can actually sum the inputs together. Nice. Um, once again, with all the audio, it's all done in a traditional manner. Sure. So, like for instance, with the monitor, it's all done with relays. Right. Um, part of the thing of actually being able to produce something like this in today's market is we've done a lot of work where we've been using relays instead of the big switches. Because the relays suddenly are, are far more um, maintainable, affordable, right. and uh, manufacturable. Right. Um, but the actual function of a relay switching is the same as a switch switching. Um, so you actually see this, so it actually jumps in steps here, you actually see as relays are switching in and out, and if you bring the dim in, it's the same thing. 
And if, if you listen closely, you'll actually hear him here. Oh, my fault. Yeah. I'm, t I'm touching the talk back control there, which are <laughs> great. And um, you know, a couple other little features are, you know, there's three sets of monitors, mains, Alt-1, Alt-2. Yeah. And in the Alt-2 mode, you even have a 7.1 input with a 7.1 output. So if you do need to do a full on uh, surround mix, you do actually have a way of monitoring it and having an actual 7.1 monitor. Oh, wow. Um, obviously at that point you'd have to use uh, the buses and do fix the signs because sure. you don't have a pan for it. But uh, you know, we found that a lot of people have said that when they're actually mixing music for surround, mm -hmm. the center channel is normally sacrosanct. That's where your, uh, sure. that's the dialogue channel. So yeah. you're generally not using that with the music, but you right. want the surround so you actually be able to create your space. Great. It's great. Now, as far as the uh, compressors here, these yes. 33609, 2254, 2254. diode, uh, original diode uh, compressors. And uh, you know, as I said, they're actually they're there, so you can actually switch them straight into the mix path here. Or they can be, if they're not here, they're available on the connector panel. Or if you have a patch bay built in, you can have them, have them on the patch. Beautiful. Um, obviously, we're more than happy to build a patch bay for people, and some of the consoles we build have a patch bay built in. Right. Um, this one here that's actually being shown right now was being built that actually had a patch bay. This is a very early build stage, but I think in a couple of pictures you'll see it with a full-on patch bay in there finished up. There we go. Nice. Um, we are distributors for Mosses and Mitchell, and we're direct uh, dealers for Megami, so we build everything the proper best way we can do that. Great. Which looks absolutely gorgeous, just sleek, efficient, with lots of functionality. And it can be built in basically any size from 8 channel up to 64 channels. What's the biggest you built so far? There's a 64 channel one down in Manaus in Brazil. Oh wow. This is a, an 8 channel with a, with a sort of like production style console. Um, so that we actually have, it's only 8 channels but it has the, your DAW workstation area. I love that you have VUs here as yeah. well. So these stereo pairs? The, the, the VUs are just on the groups, except oh, for the, the, groups. the stereos I see. and so on. I see. Um, right. And the, the bar graphs, the actual bar graphs can be switched between looking at the monitor input or the line input or the direct outputs. Great. Yeah, they look beautiful. There's a sort of sense of classic design. Yeah. Which is really nice. And you know, we do little sort of nice little things like you know, if the customer is available and wants to do it, they come with us to the wood yard to pick out the wood for the trim. Nice. And so on. You know, this this one here is actually in a walnut. Yeah. Uh, this one was a mahogany that was then stained grey. Right. We've done we've done a couple a couple in maple. Right. Um, and then obviously the same thing with the leather trim. It's like you know, you choose what colour you want. I mean and how you want it. I mean, that was kind of the way, wasn't it? Yeah. Back in the 70s, Absolutely. every, every bespoke, console was, how do you want it? built, yes. Yeah, what do you need? How do, how do you want the summit? What do you need? How do you want this? Whatever, yep. yeah. Beautiful. Well, it's, you know, back in the old days, before console manufacturers were around, it was always down to the chief engineer of the studio to build what the studio wanted and what it needed. Right. So, I mean, there's certain, yeah. Yeah, certain limitations as to what we can do. We're not going to be doing major changes to the channels, but outside right. of that, we're willing to do whatever anybody wants. Great. Great. This is beautiful. Well, fantastic stuff, my friend. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. We're going to so do... Do, we. Thank you. We'll do links. Desktop is going to be down below. Burbank Audio Systems. Look at that. I got... I got first time I've ever had your card. Really? Never needed it. <laughs> it's beautiful. And... Once you have my number, why do you need my card? Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Bruce is a man. Um, like I said, LA is a great community of we love it. engineers and producers, and we all we all know each other and look after each other. Yes. I've been very blessed to be here and like just be you know it's great coming here as an Englishman and be accepted. Absolutely, no, it's by, good, isn't it? Yes, it is really good. So thank you ever so much. Love this, really really beautiful. We'll probably have to talk about my future with consoles. That'd be good. Look forward Thanks to very it. much. Thanks so much, Warren. Thank you. Please check out the links below. You can go and look at the console. You can go to obviously look at uh, Burbank Audio Systems, but you can also check out the Death Doctor. Have a marvelous time recording a mix. So good to see you again, Doug. Yeah, you too, Warren. It's been awesome. It was uh, what about like three, four months ago at Summer Nam. Summer Nam, which I really enjoyed. I did too. It's the first time I did that show, and it was great. I feel what I liked about that was I felt like everybody there was a musician. Yeah, well, as well as an engineer and producer. It's Nashville. It's Nashville. Yeah. So everybody like came there. I don't know. It was just a lot. Of, it was a really, really good time. And I, after I got back, I talked to a lot of people that didn't go there this year, and they're like, "Yeah, they heard from everybody. It was really good, and they wish they'd gone." Yeah. <laughs>
Well, it was just the whole vibe there yeah. was different than uh, AES or yeah. the Winter Nam. Um, I just really enjoyed it. It just was. I great. love Nam from a musician point of view because I can yeah. go and play a guitar and then come back and talk about mic pre's and compressors. Um, but I also like going to events like this. Um, where it really is all just about like front end, yeah. and mixing microphones, all that kind of stuff. Well, this is our, you know, for us, this is the show. Yes. Yeah. This is our audience right here. Totally. Yeah. But look at it, it's like, it's full of young people. Yeah. I think John, who we were just talking to, did a really great job this year of oh, like yeah. getting it out there. Yeah, definitely. And that's a big deal because we need that groundswell of people understanding what this is all about. Yeah. And really, and they're loving and appreciating high quality stuff. And right. It's awesome. And I think a lot of that has to do with you, with all the great stuff that you've done. Well, thank you. I mean, it's 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 fun. I think that there, I think there's just a, a whole bunch of us that we're all really enjoying this, and we're just trying to bring everybody in. Yeah. Well, I think it's vitally important for all these young people coming into our industry to to learn the basic stuff that they're not going to learn anymore because you don't have the apprenticeship in a studio. Sure. So. So somebody's got to do it. Right, great. <laughs> so have you got any uh, got any fun stuff to tell us? Did you have this out there last time? I did. I don't think we talked about no, it. No, that's why. Let's just talk about this. Yeah, this is our VT5. This is a stereo equalizer. Great. It's a true stereo with one set of controls for both channels. Beautiful. We originally, the VT4 is exactly the same. In fact, it looks exactly the same, but it's a single channel. Wonderful. But we got requests from mastering facilities who wanted, Oh wow. you know, Less rest, rack hey, space, that's and they're always going to use it together. So, no higher praise than a mastering engineer wanting it. Yeah, well, yep. I'm pleased that this has ended up in a lot of mastering places, along with the VT7. Great. So I like this because you know I can go here, I can do my 10 or 12, which is the classic kind of yeah. you know mastering boost. I can do my 10 or 12, but then I can come here at 4K, which is that three to five K range, which is always painful in our ears, right. and do a little bit of a cut there, which I think is beautiful. Yeah. So that's nice. So, yeah, definitely falling in all the right, falling in all the range that we want. Well, you know, the way I designed this was basically to, you know, put, put it this way: is a lot of time with clip leads, changing component values, sure, listening to it for long periods of time, and then zeroing in on the frequencies that I found were, were the most useful to me. Right. And. You know, one of the things for an equalizer like this that people need to learn to do is think of it in a different way because right. you're really sculpting the spectrum. Sure. And you need to use things in conjunction with each other, especially the high and low yeah. um, cut and boost just to, you know, shape that. Sure. Because you can do a lot of boost at 10K and then even use 10K here and yeah. cut it a little bit. And it gets, because the curves are different, it gives you an entirely different sound. Wonderful. That's really beautiful. Yeah. So this is uh, great. Here it is. Well, thanks ever so much. Thanks for showing this because we didn't get to look at it last time. Yeah. Well, I really thank appreciate you, Warren. Thanks keep very up much. the good work. Thank you. Okay. All right. Well, hope you're having a marvelous time recording and mixing. Thank you, Doug. Here we are, AES 2016, once again, Los Angeles Convention Center with these lovely ladies from the Women's Audio Mission. So, what can you tell me about it? What can you yeah. tell us about it? So my name is Kelly, this is Veronica. Hi. <laughs> and Women's Audio Mission trains 1,200 women and girls every year in recording arts. Wonderful. In the only studio in the world built and run entirely by women. The only professional Where studio. Where is it? It's based in San Francisco. We have members worldwide. Uh, we have lots of member benefits. We have internship opportunities, Great. job placement. We placed women at Pixar, Dolby, Electronic Arts. Amazing. Um, we have a lot of great industry sponsors. There's a, actually a little sign with all of the amazing people who got us here to Wonderful. AES. Yeah, we're just training. We train over 1,200 women and girls every year um, in the recording arts, and we're just trying to get more women in the industry. Yeah, look <laughs> us up on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Yeah. We're, we're really, um, we wonderful. have a huge online presence, so look us up. Amazing. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. We're really happy to be here. Yeah. Thanks. Jonathan Pines, how the devil are you? A pleasure, sir. Always great to see you. How have you been? Making good records? Yeah. What have I done since the last time I saw you? Probably about 40 records. Hey, today, Christian Castro's record is out today. It'll be about two weeks old. Congratulations, Christian. By the time it, you know, this airs, it'll be two weeks yeah. old. But, um, yeah, so he's a big Latin guy, so I produced his album and it came out today. Awesome. So that's really awesome. exciting. 
Really good. So we did that since the last time I saw you. I think Ace's record came out between... No, no, I saw you at Summer Nam. Yes, and you, you, I think you just wrapped Ace's record. Yeah, yeah, us, right? yeah, it just came out just before that, yeah. So yeah, I've been busy, and then doing a million other projects. And Produce Like a Pro is and doing to do awesomely producing really well. And it's actually doing really well, yeah. So it's been I very good. a lot of great content. This yes. man putting a lot of good stuff out there. It's really cool. Good, and you're making great products. And today, I would like to talk to you about a brand new product that we're really proud of. This is the Shelfer Channel from Rupert Neve Designs, which we call it a brand new vintage. This is the first time in 50 years that Rupert's made a Transformer gain preamp. So 15, first 15 dB of gain from the actual Transformer, then feeding Class A electronics for the rest of the 72 dB of gain. Big old Transformer in here. Maybe we'll is it custom, custom designed by him? All custom, always. Can we just do a little divergence? Because the last Please. time I spoke to you at depth about this, mm -hmm. I didn't know this, but he started off designing started a building. Partridge. A partridge. Okay, so where would you find a partridge transformer? High watt amplifier. Fire, high watt, orange, early Marshall. Pick me. Laney. 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 Original Laney amps found on all the first Black Sabbath and records. Talking some of the best guitar sounds all the time. And as Rupert partridge talks about it, he says, well, they weren't really good, but people really liked them. Which means they weren't the most linear device on the planet, but oh but my god, they sound sound. good. Yeah. So that is the sound of a lot of British rock to me. Yeah, no, I know. And that's where he first started doing transformer design. Right. And well, Laney Amp, the very first Laney Amp on their first Black Sabbath album, that's yeah. my favorite guitar sound. I have a friend who has two of those amps that he made in his garage, Laney made in his garage, and trying to peel them from him, from England. Anyway, so that was awesome to find out. I didn't know that. Last time we talked, spoke about it, I never knew that. So to have so that kind of... Ru Rupert's in trans been in Transformer design this entire time. Great. Designing the Marinaire, what then became St. Ives, which eventually was bought by Carnell. But originally, all those designs are Rupert's. That's interesting. So that was all the same company because there's all these yeah. different arguments about. Okay, so the, I, lo I one, love his stuff. One, one form of the reality of history is you have Marinaire in 1966 coming out with the L10066 amplifier uh, um, transformer, arguably the most famous individual transformer on the planet. Right. Okay. Out of that, Marinaire couldn't make enough of them, so they had Saint Ives also doing this. When Saint Ives went out of business and laid non-functional for quite a while. Carnell bought the factory and the pieces. They didn't buy all the recipes and all everything exactly, but they bought the winding machines and the factory and then started reissuing Carnhills as St. Ives, which is why you now see them stamped St. Ives. Because okay. they bought the name and they have the right to actually do that. Are they the same transformers? No. No, nobody's making transformers the same way. The EPA won't let the, you do them. Oh, there are materials you can't use. Right. Things like PCBs that were involved in transformers materials that go into the winding, the right. composition of the core, it's heavy metals you have to use, the type of nickel, the type of iron, sure. what you have to do to make them and to powderize it or, and use it. Right. So nobody, I mean, to be perfectly honest, nobody's making transformers like Marinaire did originally. And there's a reason why people love those original round can and square can Marinaires. Right. Because they have a particular sound that really hasn't been duplicated ever since. Would it be safe to say, though, you're also talking about, you know, 50-year-old components that don't conduct electricity wire, quite the same way. Wire generally doesn't age. The only thing that's going to change there is the uh, insulation around it okay. and, and possible minor shorts and jumps in the shorts sure. and then the uh, whatever the bobbin is actually fixed in. Cool. So that would change. But for the most part, a transformer remains a transformer okay, throughout good. its life unless it's seen a lot of DC or some kind of damage. Which is also quite possible. Which is often quite possible. Yes, in, a, in so, the wonderful world of rock and roll. Yeah. All right, so tell so us, to, thanks to for that. Hark back to that. So, so we have a custom Rupert Neve Transformer using his original cookbooks. He still has his notebooks from before the Partridge days. So he's got all his data for all of this on how he made all the Transformers. Beautiful. All the problems. So came up with a wonderful design here. Um, get back to it, 72 dB of gain, the first Transformer game preamp in 50 years. We, of course, put a Rupert Neve Design R&DI, which we had the pleasure of giving away on Produce Like a Pro over uh, last summer. Uh, so 2.2 uh, mega ohm input, really high impedance, a through and a ground lift, because who would ever need that on an actual DI? A lot of people just put a quarter inch jack, and they don't realize, well, I gotta put a Y cable and cheat the, the AC cord or whatever. No, we actually have a ground lift on it. Nice. Next, next up, we have a high pass filter, uh, sweepable from 25 hertz all the way up to 250. Very Press nice. Press a button and it shows up in the side chain of the compressor. Pretty handy. Three band inductor EQ, which we've talked a little bit about before. 
Um, I think Stephen Slade just dropped his microphone. The, uh, the Stephen Slade <laughs> microphone system may have had a problem. Um, <laughs> Okay, one of the things that we've talked a little bit about for us, what's an inductor? An inductor is really half a transformer. So you have wire wrapped around a coil, and at the low end of inductors, you have them with an air gap or a plastic filled. If done right, and of course we do it right at Rupert Designs, you have an iron core, or right. a ferrite core of some type, and then you have specific laminations of the type of material that's in there, or powdered material that's in there. And we use, for the techno geeks and you guys, we use a PQ type, or E-shaped, uh, uh, inductor. And these are again custom designed by Rupert Need Designs for our products. Why is an inductor cool in EQ? Because like a transformer, it affects both sides of the, of the circuit it's affected to. So in other words, it will affect what's feeding it and what comes after it and give you that classic vintage sound. Lovely. So three band e, uh, vintage EQ, low end uh, based around the concepts of a 1064, the mid range around a 1073. Love the 1064 EQs. And then we have a, a, a hybrid and a little bit more modern sound for the high end. After that, we have literally Rupert's first dial bridge compressor since the 2254E or the 33609. So nice. again, 50 years since he's done a dial bridge compressor. And we've done a couple of cool and special things to it. It's a full wave rectifier instead of a half wave rectifier, which means we can have faster time constants. So if you were to ever criticize the 2254E, which you would be insane to do, but if you were to criticize that, it would be that it doesn't go fast enough perhaps on its attack and release. So exactly. in the fast position with the fast switch, this will do 35 microseconds. So 1176 speeds with the dialed bridge compressor. And I, m I made that comment about the 2254 and even the 33609 that it wasn't quite fast enough for me. And I got this diatribe of people like, you're wrong. It's like, no, but that's kind of what I like about the 2254s and the 33609s. Is that little, what's the right word, sponginess? Is that OK? Mm -hmm. Very Thank much you. So. And, and let me tell you why that happens, because yeah. I think this will be interesting to some of your listeners. Please. Okay, so a diode bridge compressor. Why is a diode bridge compressor interesting? Okay, with no threshold, in other words, no compression whatsoever, threshold all the way up, yeah. somewhere around plus 16 to plus 20, you start to get some internal modulation distortion from actually starting to flip the diodes. So that happens to be very even order distortion and sounds really good, cool. part of your vintage sound. Once you engage the compression, then the rectifier starts behaving in a manner that it has non-linear, very even order distortion from basically 400 hertz down to well below 20 hertz. Nice. So low frequency weight and girth. That's what you're used to hearing in that. Right. That's why a dial bridge compressor is a non-linear device, hard to model. The shelfer channel runs on 48 volts instead of 24 volts, so yep. twice the voltage available. You've got parallel compression built in here. You, of course, got silk red and silk blue. So silk blue, think low frequency harmonics. Silk reds, think mid frequency harmonics. And we did one other really cool thing for this, which no one has done today, and we're sure to be copied soon. We have two transformer taps on the output. Nice. One's at plus 26 dBm, our standard drive anything, but you gotta have a pretty hefty A to D converter for that. So we put a negative 20 output, I mean, sorry, a 20 plus 20 dBm output on it, six dB down. So if you're driving an antelope, you're driving an Apollo, something that clips at plus 20, 120 and a half, you can soak the output, you can drive the output transformer hard, it's not gonna cream the input of the A to D converter. Nice. So they're both live at the same time, you can feed two things if you want. Question is, everybody, ways. how did you remember all this stuff? This is good, I'm impressed. Uh, for for so real. This is one what, of the most detailed really explanations I've out ever of this seen. Is, Great. Okay, when we, Rupert has always wanted to innovate and drive product development forward, get to the next better thing, make something with lower distortion, lower noise, better sound. He's always right. looking to move forward. Sure. We, we did get him to look back at the past Good. here and make a device that's not linear. Right. This is not going to be 0.001% distortion. Sure. This is designed to be vibey the entire time. Good. Which is something that you and I, of course, both love. We do, yeah. And we look for in a lot of things. So we're very pleased to see this happen. And really, in terms of improvements, the improvements are faster attack time for it lower noise, yeah. but that vibey sound great. and that great harmonic vintage character that we've I come to I think the, the handful of companies that I've been talking to that I've gravitated towards, and obviously this is a great product that fits what the mold I'm about to say, is that, exactly what we're talking about, you know, is create creativity, about getting something that's really, because we spend our lives growing up, like we need something really beautiful and clean that captures it perfectly. The thing is now... It's a tape era, we did need that. Yeah, and the, the thing is now, kids are, 
opening up and they've got 50 freaking plugins that can do all this stuff. So they want to be inspired going in. People well, want to be inspired and, and you know, I've talked about a lot about this, and it's yeah. a constant theme for me, which is failure to commit. You want to commit to a good sure. sound. You want to make a record that sounds good from the start to the finish. Yeah. Because you, as a player, because primarily you started as a player, you're sure. an awesome producer engineer right now, but you still play yeah. a lot on most of the records you make. You want to play with Slash and Ace Freely the other day. It was pretty cool. You want to be inspired <laughs> by what you hear. Sure. You want to have a headphone mix that gets you inspired to play. You want yeah. the sound to be good. You and I came up in the tape era, which meant when we switched from one reel to another, you had about three minutes to shove up the faders and have a mix. There was no yeah. instant recall. You had to make a good sounding record and put it on tape that way. Yeah. And to this day, that means when you sit down to mix one of your tracks, you know you can bring it up, you can make a, you can mix a song in three hours because yeah. you don't have to make decisions. You've made good decisions the whole right. time. And the right product will allow you to do that. And Wonderful. obviously, you know, the right producer will allow you to do that. Yeah, this is great. So I'd love to hear one. So when do I get one to try out? These are just starting to ship. They're yep. going to ship this week. Perfect. Street price is $3,495. It, but it's everything. It's, it's a, everything you it's want. It's a DI. It's, uh, it's a you know it's mic pre. Killer mic preamp. It's a three-band inductor EQ. Three-band EQ, compressor. compressor. And it's got so, the red blue thing here, which Brad Wood loves. It's even got a it's even got a VU meter, folks. And it's got a VU meter. Wonderful. Well, thanks very much, my friend. Always a pleasure. My best to everyone to produce like a pro. Check him out. He's always got great things to say. Thank you. Have a marvelous time recording and mixing.